my beautiful friends. Maya Acosta here with another Instagram Live. I'm your host for the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions podcast. And today I have another guest. Uh, now, this individual is also going to be part of the Peaceful Planet Foundation's annual retreat. This is the fifth year that they do this retreat in Houston, October 7th. We're going to talk about her participation in the retreat. And then um, I'm going to put links after I post this. So, um, you know, please uh, check it out. Again, it's the Peaceful Planet Foundation's annual retreat that they're doing this year. And so today I'm going to have Jacinta, a.k.a. Kaylian Darshan. That is her spiritual given name. And let me introduce her before I bring her on. So Jacinta celebrates and supports the conscious awakening of humanity as a yoga teacher, mantra and meditation guide, ordained minister, sound and energy practitioner and choosing a plant based diet. Oh, my gosh, you're speaking my language. Jacinta te teaches mindfulness practices in Houston schools for Peaceful Planet Foundation, has contributed to their online video series and proudly serves on its board. Now, if you remember, I, I did have doctors Munish and Bandana Chawla speak specifically about how she does these works in the school system. Gifted the spiritual name Kaylin Darshan, she regularly teaches Kundalini Yoga and the Meridian Yoga Technique, leads Kirtan and Mantra Meditation events, and bi-monthly guides new and full moon meditations. Jacinta holds a bachelor's degree in anatomy, physiology, and psychology, a bachelor of metaphysics, and has studied sound healing practices with Jonathan Goldman. Eileen McCusick and Krishna Das. And her website is www.kaliandarshan.com. And I'm actually going to put her website right here while I get, have a chance. Let's go ahead and invite Jacinta to join us live. How are you, Mai? What a beautiful introduction. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me on your program. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I. You heard my introduction today. I We're going to speak about a couple of things. First of all, I want people to know a little bit more about the Peaceful Planet Foundation, the annual retreat. You're very involved as a board member and in working with their initiatives in the school system. So I'd love for you to talk about that and then your participation at the astral retreat doing a kundalini yoga yeah. tell us about uh, your given name and how all of that got started uh kalian darshan well that was my given spiritual name when i was uh, a student studying kundalini yoga and i really resonated with it you know kalyan is actually an indian rag the name of an indian rag which is a very specific rhythm that is often played at the beginning of ceremony and I often find myself in that situation as a musician, uh, the Chen's mantra and Lee's kirtans, which is a lovely uh, you know, collection of mantras that we sing from our hearts and really find those beautiful, loving feelings, those blissful states chanting together. Um, yeah, that definitely resonated with me. And darshan is a beautiful expression of, you know, what we're all seeking is that, you know, that that real lovely essence within that, you know, the divine. That, that is within all of us and really reflecting that out so that we can all find that within ourselves. Yeah, it's, it's a lovely name. But Jacinda is my given name, so I answer to either. Okay. I'm so glad that you corrected me on the pronunciation because it's such a beautiful name. So I try, I'm going to try it again. It's Kalyan. Yes, when I hear people say it like <laughs> Dr. Manish and Dr. Bandana, Kalyan, if they say Kalyan. it's such a nice yeah. name. Yes, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Wonderful. Okay. So now tell us more about, um, first, yeah, let's start about the retreat and then more about what is Kundalini Yoga. And I know you have so many other offerings. The Peaceful Planet Foundation, my gosh, it's such a beautiful, beautiful foundation organization with, you know, the, the it's come so much from that desire from Dr. Manish and Dr. Mandana to really bring peace to the planet through mindfulness, mindful living, mindful eating, mindful movement, uh, mindful listening, mindful awareness. And, you know, there are 
studies now that really show that in order to find true happiness and to even find true productivity, the key is mindfulness, being present in the moment, bringing all of your attention to whatever it is you're doing, whether you're driving your car or brushing your teeth or practicing a breath or practicing a meditation. And, you know, there's a program that we do in school that's needed these days. Children uh, are in a, a difficult uh, period of time. There is so much change occurring on our planet right now. Their parents are often so, so busy and so to have some training on how they can come back and find their center, uh, how they can even, uh, you know, inform their parents on things that they can eat that are really, really tasty, but so healthy and plant-based and really simple to prepare. Uh, we bring them mindful movement, mindful awareness, mindful breath. I take some sound instruments into the classroom and they close their eyes and they listen and they listen and you know, they use all of their senses, we do some movement and it's very, very relaxing for them, very calming for them. And particularly, you know, coming through COVID now, it's, it's really needed. And I know if there's any teachers listening or watching, they'll really speak to that. You know, it was a very, very difficult time for everyone, especially the little ones. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, the Peaceful Plan has so many programs. Every time they offer this, there are so, it's just filled with people who really bring a lot of cutting edge information, whether it be to well, all manners of lifestyle, whether it be to how you want to physically move your body, to the diet that you're eating, and information about, you know, the, the stuff that's really happening now so that we can really contextualize all of this and recognize the true benefits of what we're doing, not only for ourselves and our local, you know, our families, our friends, our communities, but the planet at large. You know, every little thing that we can do, you know, we're all connected, it impacts all of us. So yeah, it's a very, very beautiful endeavor. And mm -hmm. it's always mm -hmm. packed to the rafters. So if you haven't got your ticket, it's only two weeks away, definitely get a ticket for that Peaceful Planet Foundation uh, retreat. Uh, but my offering this year will be Kundalini Yoga and meditation. And uh, this is a practice that I dearly love. You know, before I did yoga, um, I was a student of metaphysics and, and chanting and toning and sound healing. But before that, I spent two and a half decades as a professional musician touring, producing, singer, songwriting, and it was very chaotic and it wasn't healthy. And, but there was always a part of me that was, you always had that kind of sense of there was more. And, and so sort of got onto that path very, you know, a lot more seriously in 2009. Uh, but then Kundalini Yoga found me, a friend said, come along to a sound bath. And so I'm always up for a sound bath. And whilst there was a component that was a sound bath, it was a Kundalini Yoga class and it was amazing. You know, arms in the air doing this breath of fire and I walked out so blissed out that I left my purse. I was just on another planet. It really just so lifted my spirit. It, it lifted my frequency. And this is such a key in whether we're overcoming depression, whether we are wanting to just find more joy in our life. When our frequency is vibrating at a higher state, we certainly have a much more joyful life experience. But to sort of unpack Kundalini yoga more, it's, it's actually a yoga, you know, it's come through like all yogas through many different sort of paths and, and lineages. And it landed in America driven by the notion that it was really going to begin blossoming right now. And that's because there is so many challenges on our planet. Uh, there is such a challenge for, uh, and there's a lot of obstacles with just trying to survive, let alone thrive, in you know, figuring who we truly are. So this is the yoga of personal awakening, really coming back to connect with the essence of who you are. And so the practices uh, are your traditional, you have the yoga style asanas, but we use them more so moving them, it's a moving asana often in rhythm with the breath. And so what we're doing is you're coming home to your natural rhythm. When you come back to your natural rhythm, start flowing as you flow, life then finds more harmony. And there are plenty of examples of people that have come in with high blood pressure, really strung out, and over a relatively short period of time, they've really come into their own calm, centered, grounded, at peace, inspired by life again, feeling enthusiastic, feeling more in connection with themselves. Mm -hmm. So we practice moving as silence. We do a lot of breath. And I mean, gosh, 
yoga and breath work there's just so much data out there that we know for sure breath is absolutely mm. imperative when we're looking to find peace when we're looking to find calm so much can be going on in our outer world but when we've practiced how to come back to that center we can really deal and cope and and restore that that state so much more quickly we we don't get those dreadful panic attacks and anxiety attacks which i have experienced in the past where it's impossible to make a good decision you, you know everything's going a million miles an hour you feel like everything is a train wreck so with practices where very specific practices that are so simple where you can bring harmony back into your nervous system where you can regulate your nervous system um, kundalini yoga has like all of these recipes for different practices of of asanas and the different practices of breath mm -hmm. um, you know breath holds and segmented breaths and all kinds of fun it's actually quite fun and they have a very specific outcome so it's also a practice that really allows um, you know the strengthening of the of the nervous system so this allows us to build resilience which is so important these days and it balances the hormonal system and the nervous system so it brings your body and your mind and your emotions into balance it's a really heart opening opening practice you know getting into that beautiful space of heart coherence when we're in coherence everything in our body comes back to flow uh, you're going to build strength you're going to build your flexibility uh, every class is different so i teach each morning at 8 a.m for an hour online monday to friday when i'm here in in the states in houston and then when i'm in australia it becomes a pm class when you're <laughs> over here but at peaceful planet foundation retreat um, I'll be offering a Kundalini yoga meditation breath experience. So come along, come and get a, a taste of it. It's, it's really quite profound. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I wish I could go. Be, I'll be at the main stage, I think. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. So I wish I could join the sessions, but I will tell you that I try to attend as much as, you know, cause I'm in Dallas. So mm -hmm. When I learned about Dr. Munish or Dr. M and Dr. B, Dr. Munish and, and Bhana Mahala, yeah. yes, I started going there and it's beautiful on my podcast, you, you know, people often hear me talk about the benefits of lifestyle medicine and yet all these other wisdoms have been in place for so long right. and the rest of the, you know, of I, I started learning about lifestyle medicine about uh, seven years ago, but before that, I had an interest in Kirtan chanting. I do know who um, Jonathan Goldman. Oh yes, of course. Like yes. when I started learning about mantras, yes. I was familiar with his work. I lived in um, San Diego, Lovely. and so beautiful, beautiful. that environment really fostered a lot of these interests when it came to meditation and doing inner work. And then I relocated to Dallas about 10 years ago and felt like, oh, where's my community? Where do I get started? Now, the world has changed a lot. There are more and more people that, are, that have these spiritual practices in place. Um, I like that it's becoming more common, more mainstream for people to, to understand the power of yoga and breath work, to ground themselves, as you've been talking about, to build resiliency. Um, it sounds like what you're doing is something that I would be drawn to. Tell us about the online courses or classes that are available in case people are not able to attend the Houston retreat. Sure. Uh, Mondays to Fridays, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Um, I teach Kundalini Yoga. We begin with um, a Kriya set, so that's going to be more physical. And then everyone gets to lie down, enjoy a lovely relaxation to integrate with the gong, nice gong bath uh, <laughs> relaxation period. And then we have uh, a meditation and each class is different. Um, as I was talking about, you know, it's so much about finding and restoring your own unique rhythm. It's all about awakening you. Um, I inform those classes and which careers I'm teaching based on the larger rhythms that are out there and that's the movement of the planets and the sun and the moon and how you know we're all in receiving you know we're receiving those energies as well and so it's really nice to sort of bring that into the the rhythm of 
the classes that we teach. So, you know, there's going to be a little difference between what we're doing in the spring, what we're doing in the autumn, what we're doing, you know, in the summer, the fall. We've got the equinox coming up this week. So this is, you know, a period of time where we really want to find balance. You know, any practices that really help you restore balance, balance to the hemispheres of your brain, balance to, uh, you know, whether you're feeling like you're really um, asserting yourself or whether you're just, you know, more masculine and yang or whether you're feeling more dreamy and, and creative and more yin, bringing those into balance so they can co-create together. You know, there's so many polarities that can sort of come out of whack and this is a beautiful period to really work with those energies that are coming into the planet now as we approach the equinox uh, to set intentions for restoring the balance within ourselves. Mm, yeah, very I was just going to say Sundays I do an in-person class, so from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. It's a bit of a longer class and that takes place in Bel Air here in Houston, Texas. Yeah. So that's an opportunity. Oh, that's one also streams online, so if you can't make that one, you can join our Zoom. Yeah, it's it's beautiful too because you meet so many people in the community. Sometimes you can feel isolated if you're beginning a new practice or you just decide, okay, this is it. I'm really going to start taking care of myself because I'm just living so stressed out. I'm having anxiety attacks. I know that I'm starting to exhibit symptoms that ultimately are going to lead me into some kind of chronic health situation. And mm -hmm. But you can feel quite isolated, but coming to a retreat like this, you meet a lot of people who have taken that step, who are on that path. And you know the community is growing. It's building. It's loving. It's embracing. It's warm and kind. And yeah, all mm -hmm. are welcome. Yes, it's lovely. We mentioned that doctors Chala, uh, who are the founders of the Peaceful pa Planet Foundation, they're trained in lifestyle medicine through the mm -hmm. American College of Lifestyle Medicine. And many mm -hmm. times, I mean, you often hear me talk about that on my podcast because I draw from the membership there at ACLM and bring them on my show to talk about disease in general, preventing and halting diseases if possible with you know the pillars of lifestyle medicine. And I'll go over them real quick to kind of showcase or, or highlight how the work that you're doing in Houston is very similar to what the doctors are being trained to do. And I say doctors, but it's really a lot of specialists that work with patients, people in healthcare, uh, dietitians, um, nurse practitioners, you name it. Many people are now understanding the power of a whole food plant-based diet. That's one of the pillars of lifestyle medicine. There's also the physical activity, you know, natural movement in our environment, just moving our body, especially as we age. Yeah. Number three is managing our stress. And that can include all the things that we're talking about today, which is, you know, using yoga, breath work, um, mindfulness, meditation, just all of it. So um, the other one is, you know, building healthy relationships, finding your tribe, just like you learn in the blue zones, coming together with like-minded people that could also honor those things that you're interested in, in having. And then um, getting restorative sleep which uh, spending time in nature can contribute to that, but also doing these practices that you're talking about right now, Jacinta. And number six, which I, I do talk about now more often, is just moving away from those other um, substances. I can take away from all of it, our sleep, our um, being mindful, which uh, I bring on sobriety coaches now on my, on my show for yeah. people that are interested in changing their relationship with alcohol. Yeah. So based on the, those six pillars that I often touch on, Jacinta, please tell us how what Peaceful Planet Foundation is doing and then what you uh, as a yoga instructor and spiritual teacher, what you do also to meet some of those pillars. Yes. The Peaceful Found, Planet Foundation with the retreat, um, they have such a beautiful community of people that they bring in that address yeah all of those pillars that you mentioned uh, and of course they are coming in from their own perspective uh, we have beautiful cooking demonstrations you know really practical uh, lessons workshops sessions that you can walk away with and, and 
bring into your life right away. Um, so for myself, yes, with the yoga, the mindfulness, the breath work, uh, even, you know, with the chanting uh, and doing kirtan, which we have an event coming up later, well, actually this week and then le uh, in October, you know, chanting is like this beautiful internal massage, you know, humming mm. with your own voice, creating vibration within your body is so profoundly relaxing, so soothing, so de-stressing. And it's proven now that it actually creates um, reproduction well, production of nitric oxide, which is a really, really powerful molecule that uh, reduces inflammation. And we know inflammation is so much behind a lot of disease states. Um, but it also, it's, it's a vasodilator. So it, vaso, it you know, relaxes all of those muscles in, in the blood system. So, you know, you have more um, you know, blood movement in the body. The blood pressure is reduced. Um, just really, really simple ways of just by humming to yourself. You know, there really is something very true about just sing that song when you're doing whatever, hum a little tune, feel it vibrating in your body. And that really allows number one, or what I just mentioned with the nitric oxide, but also, you know, if you take your mind out of it and just hum, you let your body speak. Mm -hmm. And you know, our body is our subconscious mind. This is where we hold, you know, past wounds and traumas. This is where we hold difficult thoughts and the worries and it's where we hold you know emotions that are challenging and so when we allow our body just to groan and moan and speak like when you first wake up in the morning just moving the body and letting it make its own sound you know it's not about how it sounds it's how it feels and by doing that we bring these wonderful healing vibrations in that really you know have a, it's a very very powerful practice practice in and of itself mm -hmm. just using your voice mm -hmm. box vibrating the body and then touch and all the somatic um, practices you're touching the body really feeling your own touch and listening with your ears tuning in what's the message what is my body teaching me it has an, it, in and of itself its own wisdom and when we quiet our mind and we're willing to just sit with ourselves and be intimate with ourselves just touching our own bodies you know where it may be finding discomfort but everywhere and and recreating that relationship that most of us don't even consider in fact it's almost the case when something hurts we just ignore it don't don't want to know about it which is the last thing <laughs> we really want to be doing we want to be talking to the body and then listening to the body you know a lot of people might say that is wacky but no it's not it's, it's powerful it's a beautiful way to get in touch with all of that stuff that's you know 95 percent of of what's going on within us is subconscious and so the more efforts that we make whether it be yoga and yoga is really you know we do the asanas in order to move the body and get all those wonderful benefits get the energy flowing but it's really then to settle us in so we can quieten the mind we can drop into our heart we can tune into you know, what is really going on beneath the surface which in our busy busy lifestyle we're only just dealing with that little ice tip you know that's above the surface and so much information is below that we can dive into if we're willing just to find those few minutes each day to mm -hmm. close our eyes find a comfortable place turn within listen to the breath mm -hmm. use our hands listen to our body mm -hmm. perhaps engage in a breath practice and you know that it's, it's when we're living in a culture where we're so seeking the next dopamine hit, dopamine hit, dopamine hit, it can be a little challenging to begin with. That's another reason I love Kundalini Yoga is we have these little mantras that can engage your mind. So you've got something to be using your mind with. It's actually very healthy for your, um, you know, for your mind. Um, and then a breath. So, you know, it's a great way to really commence a meditation practice because you've got some so your fingers in a position you might have your your actually your hands in a position you might be, be doing a movement you might be chanting a mantra you might be focusing your eyes so you've got these things to that are you know, deliberate because they're directing energy in your body in a very specific way but they help engage your mind so you it's easier to to hold the focus with those um little practices rather than the mind jumping to the past or jumping to the future we try to bring it into that moment of power, that moment of now. Yeah, it's so important. Yeah.
So I'm so glad that you're going into the, how we basically store a lot of this in the body. Um, I, earlier you mentioned, you know, panic, this can have, um, help if you suffer with panic attacks and anxiety, which we saw an incredible amount of, you know, mental health um, issues that people were having during the pandemic. And then we came out of it still kind of feeling a little bit bothered and confused, maybe angry for the time that was lost, upset about things that didn't happen that wish we wish had happened or didn't, you know, or the opposite. So uh, it was, you know, for many years, I've done the whole mental work, right, with the therapist and trying to solve the issues at the at the mind level through talk therapy. And we not necessarily, I don't discourage that. I mean, I have a life coach that I work with and I do talk about some of the things that I'm struggling with um, that, that are part of my journey. Um, however, I started to understand the importance of doing body work and I, I read the body keeps us, um, the body keeps a score or the body keeps the score. That's right. Yeah. Because our issues about, are in our tissues, right? <laughs> I learned about the vagus nerve. I learned that most of the work that we need to do happens. It's in the body. <laughs> like you're saying the, right. um, you know, the here. body, the trauma stays in the body. Uh, so you're, you just been talking about it. This is why these practices are so useful, especially for those of us. I did suffer a lot of trauma, uh, when I was younger. So I've had to really work at moving out of here and really being more present. Um, so yes, tell us more, a little bit more about that. You, you've already yes. been talking about it, but just yeah. the importance of breath work for those of us who probably have never learned about it like yeah breath work and body work well you know the breath most of us are not breathing correctly and most of you know in the lungs a lot of the parasympathetic nerves that, put, that trigger the relaxation response the vagus nerve are lower in the lungs so just simply by breathing so high in the chest and you know we're not getting the stimulation of those receptors that activate the relaxation response there are certain ways that we can breathe, even just simply by extending the breath out. So finding a few moments, minutes, just to close your eyes and you know, put a song on how many beats does it take for me to breathe in? And then when you exhale, breathe out for more beats. You know, make it playful. It doesn't have to be crazy. Like, <laughs> you know, just, okay, I'm breathing in for eight beats. I'm going to breathe out for 12. So when we master our breath, our, our mind follows our breath. So immediately when we begin engaging a breath practice, our mind's like, okay, what's going on? I'm going to follow on here. And um, uh, another beautiful breath practice that's, that's really quite simple is um, an alternate nostril breath, breathing in left, exhaling right nostril, breathing in right nostril, exhaling left. So it's basically you exhale left, inhale left, exhale right, inhale right. And you just keep moving backwards and forwards and that will shift your mind and your, um, if you're stressed, that will definitely bring in relaxation. And then the breath that we practiced this morning in class, a beautiful breath where you're breathing in four segmented breaths. So your breath is full. You've filled your lungs with a, and then long exhale out. And then you can bring a vision to it, you know, create a lovely, imagination is something that you want to be do or create and with every breath you're bringing it closer you're adding a little nlp and then as you exhale you're seeing that image feeling the sensation of that dream that goal that that vision coming into life and then we add to that moving the fingers as we do those four breaths as we mentally chant sa ta na ma, ma and as you're pressing your thumbs to each finger you're making connections with different aspects of your brain on each side. So you're bringing in whole brain activity. You're, you're controlling your breath. You've got a nice mantra going on. You're a beautiful visualization. It could be as simple as like, I'm smelling the sweet smell of roses. And then, ah, oh, you can let the breath out with an open mouth exhale, just a, using it as a beautiful appreciation, gratitude practice. 
So, you know, that's there's, there's just so many wonderful breasts and you can find the one that you really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other, you know, the other component, the somatic component, um, is just so important. You know, the psoas muscle, for example, they realised not too long ago that this is where we store so much PTSD trauma memory because what happens in a trauma response is you're either going to roll, you know, curl up into a ball using the psoas muscle, the big... Uh, muscle that runs, you know, behind the hip from the spine down to the, to the femurs through the pelvis, or you're going to get up and you're going to run as fast as you can, also activating those big muscles. And so then if we don't allow ourselves to process the trauma, those psoas muscles are holding those memories. You know, you'll see little animals after they've, you know, escaped the lion that was, you know, ch trying to catch them, they'll shake and they'll tremble, they'll shake it out. You see dogs do it all the time, they'll shake things off. And quite often humans are like, okay, that's happened, moving forward, not going to process that because it's not now, it was then, and so we have it still living in us. So hip opening exercises, so powerful for allowing lots of energy, setting an intention to really bring new life force energy into the psoas muscle, allowing those memories to be dissolved to be released to be processed and it can be challenging sometimes when we're sitting back and remembering a trauma and it very well could come back into the memory more real than what it was in the moment as it's coming through and, and moving out of mm. the body mind wow. but you know it, it's it's better out than in right yeah. and uh, it sort of reminds me of why sometimes you'll see it even in the movies when uh, someone's doing yoga with a friend or something and then emotions start to come up and you're and you you're like re-experiencing or maybe the emotion is coming through that pain the reminder uh and yes. it's it, it, you know they kind of make fun of it in the movies right like a playful thing like but it's real it's in other words real. and what i find too i mean there's a lot of tears in kundalini yoga classes but often people will say i don't even know why i was crying so oftentimes there's a release happening but the emotion that is coming through, they're not reliving the circumstance, they're just crying. There's something that's, and they can't even tell you what it is, but just with the movements and the breath and the mantra that we're chanting in our minds, you know, brings about profound healing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we've always got a box of tissues or two handy because it's it's just spontaneous and it's beautiful. It is. It's beautiful to know that then on the other side of that class, you're not carrying something inside of you that you were before you began that class. Yeah. So creating more space for newness. And, and of course, when we release the trauma, all the energy, the life force that was financing that limiting belief, that, that state of mind, that thing that's in the body, that energy is in return to us. It's no longer holding on to whatever it was that mm -hmm. was you know, creating that distortion. Yeah. Oh, you know, also, Carlianne, what I like about these practices and how available they can be for anyone from any background, any kind of mobility issues, also if they have those sort of issues, I like that it's available for people even if they're undergoing, um, you know, chemotherapy, if they have, if they're living with cancer, yeah. if they have yes. issues, especially with hypertension, mm -hmm. right, type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes, you know, this is a psychological perspective that I think I have, but I, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's necessarily true that when our body starts to break down, we may hold some anger or resentment against our body, especially when we have mobility issues, we can't get around as, as much because of a, you know, a procedure we had, an accident we might have had, or just the aging process. I think that what you're offering is a reminder to be gentle with ourselves. We don't have to be in optimal health to do these techniques. Absolutely. As a exactly. It's not about doing anything perfect. It's just about moving the body in that particular direction or way with the breath to how it works for you in that moment. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely not about yeah being great or perfect or anything like that because I'm far from that. Yeah. But you're right, it's bringing, you know, it's setting an intention for folks that are, you know, un undergoing some um, you know, treatment, be it with cancer or overcoming surgery. Our minds are so powerful. 
setting an intention before literally doing anything. I'm washing the dishes. Well, I'm setting an intention that every dish that I wash, I am purifying my da, 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 whatever it might be. You know, we can live so intentionally. That is a game changer. Um, and then with doing a yoga practice, a breath mindfulness meditation practice, just bringing the mind to that part of the body and, and seeing the rest of the body really embracing it, really supporting that mm-hmm. healing. And then seeing yourself whole, seeing yourself free of the anxiety that's taking the journey with you, seeing yourself not how you were in the past, but something even brighter, more beautiful in the future with the wisdom that you're bringing forward through whatever that process is that you, you know, the challenge that you're working with at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, everything can bring a gift and and suffering is is a dreadful, dreadful, dreadful thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we yeah. can do it in a way that uh, it has more meaning, that we really get some bang for a buck out of what's going on because there is a wisdom there is a process i truly do believe and have faith in the process of life but nothing comes to us without a gift there is always some bigger some bigger purview that we can look in and you know people so many times you hear them they've had this extremely challenging life experience and they say on the other side wow i wouldn't trade it because of who i am today and the gifts that it gave to me it can be really hard to see, but this is where you got to find your community. You've got to find a practice that, that really feels good for you and, and um, move through, through that with, with courage, loving the body, supporting the body, knowing that it has tremendous power for healing. I have a mantra, everything can heal. And you know, this is so wonderful to see lifestyle medicine, you know that what the Dr. Chawlers are offering. Um, just on a personal note for myself, um, around 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with Graves' disease. Now, Graves' disease is something that you're going to have forever, and the only cure is to drink a radioactive cocktail that completely ablates. It, it, it contains radioactive iodine, so the thyroid gland absorbs that, and you wake up the next morning and you no longer have a thyroid. And the way that landed on my ears it's like well if i have a shoe that's too small i'm not going to chop off my big toe (laughs) right and so it took me three years but i finally found you know my personal cure through muscle testing and as it turned out i had parasites in my large bowel and when they were eliminated with a natural interesting tonic i was completely fine i've never looked back so you know, I think we've got to really examine, explore, really look at the underlying things. It was not my thyroid gland that was having the problem. I had this, these parasites that had moved into my body and then my thyroid gland was confusing. My immune system was confusing my thyroid gland with the parasites. So as it was attacking my thyroid gland, it was making my thyroid gland secrete mm-hmm. like crazy. Mm-hmm. So it was not a pleasant time, but found the solution. So we've got to be investigative and curious and and know that you know there's often way more ways to to heal our bodies other than some of the conventional treatments out there that can be that can really shift us in not such a good way in the longer term yeah definitely a lifestyle That's right. medicine advocate for sure support the body yeah. because more yeah. often than not it, it can heal you all kinds of things especially when you can get to the underlying perhaps thought form that's been just slipping away for the last 30 years, giving Mm -hmm. the body this belief about itself. Mm -hmm. And then if you can find that and then heal that, it's incredible. There are quite a lot of stories out there now about people who have even like turned around fourth stage cancer, come completely back into health when they're able to really get underneath 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 to the root cause something that may have been you know way back in their childhood or dare i say even in a past life even in the ancestral lineage you know it's all energy yeah. and we're all connected you know That's through this right dream of of our infinite eternal lives yeah, yeah. even the a reminder that even if we are sick, if we have a, a condition that um, we're managing and perhaps haven't not been able to reverse, that we're not broken, 
this no. body will break down someday anyway, right? We will yeah. leave this body, but our spirit lives on. And that's the part that I, I, I feel like nutrition brought me back to because I was very much into the holistic aspect of things, um, taking a more natural approach. I am familiar with muscle testing. Uh, so just asking what is right for you. And so, so many other things. And while I was not fully vegan plant-based in my earlier life, I did stop eating red meat and pork in college. And then it wasn't, um, Colleen, until I gave up all animal products that I was brought back to the spiritual part of who I am. It's amazing that connection that I cleaned up my diet and then everything else just started coming back. Everything else, my connection to planet, my love for nature, using nature as medicine. Uh, and then everything else that that you are about is what lifestyle medicine is trying to bring mm -hmm. to a lot of specialists to teach them, you know what, this works. Mm -hmm. Like medicine is not just about prescribing, uh, it, you know, certain medications that people need up to a certain point or doing procedures yeah. that people may actually sure. need. But not, let's start to teach patients and the everyday people that meditation works. It works it, to help reduce hypertension and the anxiety. It helps to, you know, even with type 2 diabetes and walking oh, in yeah. nature can help. So it's uh, beginning to merge these two worlds that for a long time have been separate. And I believe the older wisdom has always been there, right? <laughs> All these it is, But it's been so very deep. And I guess it depends where you're raised as well, you know, in our Western culture. Of course, you know, the way that for me, at least you went to the doctor and, and there was always a very specific protocol, depending on what was going on with your life. And you know, whatever the doctor says is what you've got to do. In just my own sense, I had a just a, you know, an innate belief that the body was just so powerful. and We got to support the body's healing capacity foremost. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, yeah, I'm so grateful to um you know, medicine because they've saved me with a d retinal detachment. I would have been blind in my eye without it, uh, with some accidents that I've had in my life. Yeah, I'm absolutely grateful. But it's about finding the balance. Yeah. And, of course, preceding all of that, generating the healthy lifestyle that you need. And for everyone, it's different, I believe. Everyone's got their own body and their own mind and their own history and their own genetics. and um, you know, so I think you, you've got to find the path that really works for you and be patient and be willing to try different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But I'm most definitely, for myself personally, um, yeah, very much an advocate of plant-based uh, diet, lifestyle for sure. Yeah, yeah. suits me. So if you're just tuning in, I've been speaking with Kalyan. Uh, about, you know, a couple of things, a retreat that's coming up in Houston. Uh, it's called the Peaceful Planet Foundation's annual yearly retreat. It's the fifth year. And what I love most about it, well, there's so many things. You're, you're going to get the taste of like what Kalyan has been speaking about, kundalini yoga, meditation, mindfulness. There's a lunch is included, which is always a very healthy whole food plant-based meal. Um, there are guest speakers. Dr. Michael Clapper will be the keynote speaker. Other great thinkers um, will be speaking at the main stage while you have these other breakout sessions. And all of this with only a suggested donation of $35 for the entire day. Of course, you can donate more. And um, tell us also about the vendors, if you know anything about that, because I saw a message that they were looking for vendors. What else can we expect? Oh, and then, of course, will lunch be outdoors like it's been in the past? Oh, I hope so. Yeah, I really hope so. It's cooled off a little bit, so perhaps we'll be able to be outside, which is really lovely. The food is magnificent. Um, Plant-based, oil-free uh, as well, which is such a surprise. One of the demonstrations that I really enjoyed uh, was cooking without oil i'm thinking you can't do that because most of my meals begin with frying up the onions <laughs> or, or you know mushrooms these things but when you put like it's amazing you just might add a little bit of water when they start to stick and and so it naturally pulls the oils out of the vegetables themselves like well that's genius 
rather than cooking with oil and therefore the oil sort of caking onto the vegetables, which can then sort of block their capacity to sort of release their own natural oils. Yeah, um, they have fabulous vendors um, every year that I've attended, um, loads and loads of information. I mean, just be prepared to come with an open mind and just expect to learn so much and then to actually have physical experiences. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just a really, really big day, a really, really big day just to fill up on cutting edge information uh, and, and great opportunities to speak with really knowledgeable people who are really right at the top of their field. If you want to bring your own questions, if you have your own concerns about your lifestyle, this is really a place to have those answered. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, as I mentioned too, to find your community, meet your tribe, yeah. make a new buddy. Yeah. Well, I'm drawn to Houston because of all that all of you are doing, the leaders in, in Houston that are trained in all of this, that understand how to support the community with nutrition and mindfulness. Um, would you like to, as we're wrapping up, is there anything else that you'd like to tell um, our people that are watching about yourself and your offerings? Well, um, you know, I will just say one thing, as I've noticed recently, there's a bit of a, uh, there's a some, uh, negative information online about kundalini yoga uh, I think people are getting a little frightened of the term and I just want to reassure people that in all the years that I've been teaching never have I seen anybody have any negative psychotic breaks outcomes at all it's a really beautiful gentle lovely practice and uh, at least the way I teach it and that I do include you know other aspects things that I've learned including meridian yoga where we can really get in touch with pathways you know if we're feeling angry if we're feeling really worried or if we're feeling you know overcome by grief there's certain ways that we can um, sort of disrupt those patterns and allowing for those excess energies to be released um but yeah if it resonates with you come and try it because it's a really lovely practice that doesn't require um, like i had never practiced yoga beforehand so it was it's a really nice sort of entry-level practice where you don't have to feel like i'm not flexible or i'm not young or any of these things it definitely will meet you where you're at wow yeah, so come and try it out at the Peaceful Planet Foundation fifth annual retreat. I do hope I'll see a lot of the folks that are watching this there and I invite them to come and say hello and uh, bring any questions that you have, any concerns. Perhaps I can even, you know, recommend a breath or a meditation practice for you that will specifically address what you might be dealing with. Absolutely. Yeah. This has been wonderful. I have felt so calm just by listening to your voice. Oh. And of course, yeah, I just right. feel like oh, it's it's a wonderful day to start off, uh, a wonderful way to start off the day with these practices. And then, yes. like you were saying, the benefits of Kundalini Yoga is we're coming back to ourselves, yeah. right? All coming uh, home to your rhythm, to who you are, because yeah. you can live a whole life and not really know the truth of, of who you are because we you know it's easy to get caught up in life and all that we believe it expects of us we lose ourselves we do yeah. do and this is why we value these practices so come october 7th to houston i i'll put the link uh, in the chat in the post as well um, when we wrap up and take you know come for a day of self-care of pampering yourself of relaxing listening to great content doing the practices like the yoga and meditation and also watching healthy food demos. Those are so much fun. Yeah, um, and Carlina will be leading one of them and she's my favorite. I, like I, I do know, love. I know I love her. I just had dinner with her on the weekend. So I want to thank everyone that has been watching and people that will watch this recording afterwards. Yes. And yes. Kalyan, it's been wonderful. I can't wait to give you a hug and meet you in person. That's going to be awesome. Yes, Maya, thank you so much for having me. Just lovely to speak with you. Thanks. Let's do it again sometime. Yes. So have a wonderful day and thank yes. you again for joining me. My, my pleasure. Satnam, everyone. Namaste. Peace out. Bye-bye. I love.